Hello and thank you for joining me today here on the Pulpit Series. I am Frank Blaylock, your host. I want to share with you for a few moments today on the subject of permission to move to a larger place. There are times in life that to do certain things, we have to have permission. We may have to have permission on our job, with our spouse even, uh, but there are spiritual things that we must have the permission of the Lord. In a recent vision, I had seen a beautiful banquet table spread and all the tablecloth was gold. Everything was very refined, uh, dinnerware, silverware, things of that nature. And it made me feel good because when I see things like this, I think of the provision of the Lord. But in a banquet, you think of provision for more than just one person, right? Because you are part of a group of other believers in the Lord. God wants to bring you together for provision and for celebration. I go to a text today in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye, go do it, you have my permission. And then one wise servant of the prophet said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And fortunately he answered and said, I will go. So let's consider asking God to give us a larger place to dwell in. You may be in a place today that feels very restraining, feels very limiting, especially when you put that place you're in beside the vision you have for where God wants you to operate. You say, wow, I can't be in the right place. I need to move. I need to go to a new place. But before I get into the essence of the message, can I just share a prophetic word right from my heart and it is this for the Lord is a present help in the time of need he is the way maker he makes the way he makes the way even when there seems to be no way the Lord makes the way you see God creates a door he creates an access point. He creates a passageway where there is none, or at least where there did not seem to be any opening or any door. He himself, he said, is the door. He is the conduit to another place, to another realm. So we're not just talking about a physiological, geographical place. That may be part of it, and that may be a large part of it, but let us talk about the realms of God's glory. Let's talk about the places we can enter into in Christ and experience a relationship with Him we never dreamed possible because He makes a way for us. And yet, that realm that we're talking about, that passageway that he opens up to lead into, leads into himself. He will never lead you beyond himself, but deeper into himself. Within, within him are thresholds that you step into or step over into new adventures and explorations. It is not a static kind of environment. It is an environment that is very alive. It's almost as if it is breathing this relationship, this realm, this dimension in the spirit that you're able through Christ to step into. You see, because these are the kind of places that kind of leave your heart pounding with excitement. 
because you never realized, you never imagined you could have this kind of relationship or step into this dimension of the realms of glory from glory to glory, the Word of God says. You never imagined what that meant. It just looked like archaic King James version of the Word of God. But the places are real. The experiences are real too. So He is leading you to a better place. In Him, all things are forward and progressive. They are not regressive. God is always about forward momentum. If you're slipping back, you can catch yourself because that's not the Father's doing. He's not pushing you away from Him. He's not pushing you away from the good of life. He is leading you forward progressively into the better way of life. So He leads you to a broader place. The tight places reveal His faithfulness to you. Have you ever realized that? That straight place that these sons of the prophets were in, that tight place, that place of restriction, that place where it seems God has just hidden you. You're full of talent. You're full of, uh, of giftedness. You're full of all kinds of skill and knowledge and no doors open. It's a tight place. It is a straight place. And all of this God is working through and using it as a tool to bring spiritual unrest to you so that you will seek the broader place. You see, God takes these restraining situations and environments to uh, kind of push us. He uses it as a tool to make us discontent. Because you can be just so content, God wants to bring you to a holy discontent so you can leave this place, even that may be good, to go to a better place. I will assure you of this. Any place God leads you to is going to be better than the place you were in before. And He will go with you, even as Elisha said to his prophets who were studying under him. I will go with you. And I believe that there you will build habitations, kind of. I'm interweaving this prophetic word with my comments. But there you will build habitations. And there you will have water and bread enough. And the ground will give you her increase. You see, God leads you into a new place. Into a large place. An expansive place with elbow room. I think maybe the best example I can think of is when you're sitting on an airplane, if you're riding in coach, it's like this, right? And the guy over here's got the elbow rest, arm rest, and somebody over here, if you get stuck in the middle, I try never to get there, but I have inadvertently ended up in those middle seats, and it's really tight. And so the Lord wants you to come into a place where you can move, where you can breathe. He wants to move you up to business class, the first class in a spiritual kind of dimension because he wants you to be able to enjoy this ride that you're on today and indeed into a broad place. He will make a place so broad you won't slip off the side of the mountain. You know, if you're just climbing a mountain, there's just that much, a little bit of a rock to get a hold of, you could slip, right? But the Lord says, I want to bring you into a broad place. I want to bring you to the place there's no risk of falling whatsoever. Uh, Job 36 and 16 says it like this. Even so, would he have removed thee out of the straight into a broad place where there is no straightness and that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness. Now, these were Job's friends talking, okay? And they were saying to Job, if you'd live right, God would take you out of that straight place and bring you to a broad place and all the stuff sitting on your table would be like that banquet table I mentioned already. You'd have your friends over like they used to be. We'd be there with you, brother, enjoying your good success. But Job was still righteous 
in the eyes of God. He was just going through a straight place. But if you read the whole story, God brings him out into a place much larger than all of his years of working before could have ever produced because, because God brought him into a large place. That's a very interesting scripture in Isaiah 33 and 21. And I'm using, I think it's the New uh, American Standard Version. It says, the Lord will be our mighty one. He will be like a wide river of protection that no enemy can cross and that no enemy ship can sail upon. Can you just imagine that? You're in this safe place, okay? In this broad place, in this secure place. And God has just put such a river around you, such an ocean around you. And he says further, the enemy, the ships of wickedness, cannot travel on that river because I've got you saved and I've got my angels in charge to make sure they can't come and do you any harm. So I'm talking about security in this place that the Lord wants to lead you into. I'm talking about angelic security. I'm talking about God who is the God of angel armies. I'm talking about the one who said, for the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Now, if you've listened to me much, this is not the first time you've heard that scripture quoted by me because I've lived that. I know that the Lord is a man of war and there are so many battles that we try to fight. And he says, if you step aside, I take care of this for you. I'd much rather God just take care of that enemy, wouldn't you? So indeed, it is this place where he will protect you. He also is leading you to climb up into a higher elevation where your view is unobstructed. I've traveled in a few countries in the earth. I've traveled very much in the Far East and I've climbed a lot of the high towers. I misspeak a little bit when I say climb because I haven't taken it step by step, but I have gone up in the fast speed elevators to get to the viewing platform and when I'm there, I see everything clearly. When I'm on the ground, I just see the base of the tower. But at the top, I see the, the rivers and, and the harbors and the ships and the commerce. I see for, I guess, literally miles around me because my view is unobstructed. You see, God wants to bring us into an elevated position with him so that our vision is better, so that I, the air is clear. The sky is clear and the air is clean. God wants to raise you up. God wants to promote you. He wants to set you as someone in the gate of the city would be the way the Word of God teaches when it speaks of leadership. God wants to give you a position of influence so you can use your words, your skill, your knowledge, your relationship to influence others in the things of the Lord. So he's very much inclined to give you a position and to give you honor. A place he wants to lead you to of his greater presence. You know, when you get there, though, that's going to be a requirement to build something. Let's go back to our original story. Where the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, This place where we're at is too small. Let every one of us take a beam and let us go to another place and build us a larger place. We need more ground. We need more territory. Well, when you walk into these new levels with God, into this broader place, you've got to rebuild some stuff. Or you've got to build some larger stuff to accommodate the new call and the new election of God. But it is also a place of miracles. You may have to work, you may have to build, but you remember the story, right? I'm going to touch on it again in a moment, but where the guy was just working away and his axe head flew in the water, the prophet of God came, cast in a, a stick, the iron swam, came back, reached down, handed it to the guy and told him to go back to work. So in this elevated place, in this new place, in this broader place, there will be work to do, 
But while you're working, you're going to experience many miracles of God. So that should excite you about going into the new place, taking the risk, taking the challenge to go into the deeper things, the broader things of the Lord our God. It is, building is equivalent to, to growing a better you. So it's all about who you are, right? The, the real essence of this broader place, bigger place, is to make you bigger and broader. It isn't about only Cadillacs and limousines and 10,000 square foot houses. It may be that. It may not be that. Do you need that to accomplish your assignment in the earth? If you do, God is happy for you to have that. He's not stingy. Look at creation. God is not stingy. Even the mishaps, God turns into miracles. And I go back to that accent. Here's this guy. For some reason, he borrowed an axe. I don't know if he had misplaced his. I don't know if he didn't have one at all. But he borrowed it, and he lost the axe head. It just flew off. I have often said, I learned a long time ago, don't borrow anything. If you've got to have a yard rate, you don't have one, and you're going to borrow it from your neighbor, almost inevitably, It'll get broken in your hands. And you've got to buy a new one now to replace the borrowed one, which was old. So go ahead, buy yourself a new one. Buy yourself a new axe head. So you don't have to get into this dilemma. But if you do, there's a miracle of God for you to retrieve the borrowed thing so you can be a good steward of it. And I know you've heard sermons that everything we have from God is borrowed. And there's a lot of truth of that. Because he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And once he's given something, he doesn't take it away. Let me tell you, though, something about what's going to happen when you walk in and you move out. And re when you request and move out to a broader place. I believe you will or should. You should certainly request a renewal from the Lord in this thing. I think even a physical renewal, uh, a rejuvenation, an infusion of physical strength. We today need to be taking care of this body, the temple of the Holy Ghost, because the call of God and the demands of God, especially today with travel, uh, with meeting people, with ministering, maybe hours on end, we need to be physically fit. So I'm asking God to provide you with renewal of physical strength today, spiritual renewal as well, which means coming alive in Christ through your divine encounters. And I go back to that vision I mentioned in the beginning of that beautiful banquet table with the golden tablecloth and all of the all of the place settings in place and God wants to bring you to a place of greater provision so you have more crops because you've got more land and so now you have a greater harvest let us consider something again let us retouch on it Going back and look at the prompting or the motivation that moves us from this narrow place. You know, you can get comfortable too in your narrow place or you can resign yourself to the narrow place. But God might keep tightening things up if he needs you over there and you just say, I got to stay here. I don't have the energy to do anything different than this. I was thinking as I was giving thought to this message, you know, the toothpaste tube, right? It's in a narrow place. All that toothpaste is in a narrow place. But if you take and you push it, then that toothpaste has to come out of that narrow place into a whole new world. God will take his finger and push you to bring all of that that's in you, all that restricted place has to give place and enter into a broader place in the Lord. 
So God may squeeze you out of the place that you're at. And sometimes the pressure is often circumstance. Or it is when you get just dissatisfied with where you are and with your situation. Many people have succeeded after they got sick and tired, as some said, of being sick and tired. And they decided, I'm doing something about this. I'm moving up into the realms of God. I'm shaking off all my religious training that told me I can't access God. I'm limited in my access to God. I'm going all out for the Lord and the relationship I can have with Him. So it is your desire more than anything that should propel you from the straight place you're in, the narrow place that you're in, to the greater things of God. This place that God is leading you to is a place where you can build a homestead. When you study that word, I really like that. So I don't want you to miss it. So I'm going to read a couple of definitions. A homestead is a house or state and adjoining land. So it isn't just a house. It's all the land around that house. It's kind of like a just a complex of land, property, and the house that you live in. There's an old U.S. definition, and maybe it still exists. I just don't know of a homestead under these conditions right now, but a house and adjoining land designated by the owner as his or her fixed residence and exempt under the homestead laws from seizure and forced sale for debts. Wow. God wants to bring you into a homestead where you are exempt because of the homestead laws of heaven from your property being seized and sold to pay a debt. I, I could run off real quick on something else right here, but I'm not. I'm going to stay with this. Not only is this homestead a basis of life, the crops and the field, but in the homestead, now you can go out and you can, you can plant some flowers around the place. You can plant some fruit trees. You can plant a vineyard because it's all protected. This is your broader place. God wants to give you a spiritual homestead where you can put roots down deep, where it can be generational for you and your loved ones to live and abide in this thing that God gives to you. It does, doesn't it? Start to feel generational. The Lord says to David, I will give you a sure house. And then in Psalms 18 and 19, the word says, He brought me forth also into a large place because he delighted in me. Now, sometimes God does things because you delight in him. For example, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them because they trust in him. They delight in God. But then here is God saying, I delight in you, so I'm going to do this for you. Psalms 118 and 5, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. I just hear in my spirit, somebody's crying out right now and should repeat this prayer. Lord, I'm in a place of distress. Save me. And watch God step into your situation and bring you out. Let me encourage you as well with one more promise, one more word of promise. Judges 18 and 10. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure and to a large land. For, the, for God hath given it into your hands. A place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. In the earth. 
It isn't all in the sweet by and by. Praise God, it isn't. I'm living in the right here and now, aren't you? And God says, I can bring you to a place you have no want, no lack, no need. I'm going to literally, if necessary, take it out of the hands of the wicked and give it to you. Now, that's another sermon. How does that happen? Maybe we'll deal with that later. Certainly, are you excited now then for what God has for you? Where God is leading you? Are you convinced now that He is delighted in you and wants you to have a better life? So, everybody has heard this phrase from T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for God to take you into this broad place? Are you asking God right now for permission? Lord, can this place is so straight. Can we move to a better place? Uh, we'll, we'll do the work. Every man will take a timber. We'll take our tools. We're willing to go to work when we get there. We're willing to establish a homestead by your grace. If you are, God says, you can move up. You remember that TV series, maybe you're not as old as I am, but the song basically was, the theme song was, I'm moving up to the east side. I'm leaving where I'm at. I'm going to a better neighborhood. You see, your address is about to change because you're moving to a new neighborhood. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord today.